Wrong intro. That's the one that's not cut. Uh, how is everybody doing today? Welcome to the Pop Culture Corner. My name's Ty, and I'm your host, and I'm the creator of Pop Culture Corner as well. Um, look, we're still waiting on Austin. He's slow. Just kidding. He's doing something for his grandmother. So I figured I would come on and we could talk a little bit about the things that we're going to discuss today. Uh, we do have a lot to talk about, a lot of stuff going on in the world of pop culture, uh, a lot of stuff that, well, some good, some bad, some in between, but I just wanted to know, how is everyone doing? How's everyone doing today? Uh, it's good to be back. Uh, last night, we had this, oh my God, we had such a great interview with um, Gary Gray, uh, who was in the Cosby Show, Rocket Power, yada, yada, the list goes literally on and on and on and on. Um, so if you haven't watched that by now, check it out. Uh, it's a really fun conversation. He's done so much, um, so much work over the past 30 years. It's not even like, it's literally unfathomable. I thought Ray Porter's rap sheet was long. Dude, this guy, I mean, he's just, he's done everything from the Fresh Prince. Uh, it, it goes on. And then the day before that, we had Owen Glarbman on. Uh, chief film critic from Variety. And that kicked off our live in July breast cancer fundraiser event. As always, guys, the links are in the description below. Uh, so if you can donate, please donate. Um, also, become a member of the Pop Culture Corner family uh, by hitting the join button below. It's right below you. It's, it's right there. All you have to do is hit it. And then, yeah, I know, there's a slight fee uh, of either $2.99, $4.99, or $9.99. Choose $9.99. You get the most. Um, but you get access to podcasts early, behind-the-scenes content, discounted merchandise, one yearly gift, uh, depending on which um, tier you're on, and, 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 and all stuff like that. Um, before we get into everything today, I just want to say thank you to everyone who always shows up. Uh, Prakash, Jack, Caden, Adam, Billy, Nick, you guys are, I mean, you guys are the greatest, uh, the greatest guys in the world and the greatest people I could ever think of, um, you know, being able to talk to this kind of stuff about. You guys are literally amazing. Um, but, but we have some things to discuss today, including uh, Scarlett Johansson made some comments uh, about Joss Whedon. Now, you would have thought <clears throat> that the comments geared a certain way, except they didn't. They were mostly positive, which kind of made me start thinking, does Joss Whedon have something on Scarlett Johansson? No. Was there a thing between them? No. Couldn't be possible, right? No. None of that. None of that. But we'll get into it a little bit later. Um, also, our first look at Black Adam behind the scenes, uh, Dwayne the, the Rock Johnson shared the first image um, of Black Adam of him in the suit today. Uh, we shared it on Instagram. I think a lot of other people did too, uh, but he looks great as Black Adam. We'll get into that as well. And the, uh, <clears throat> the third big thing that we'll be talking about today um, is that I found out last night. Now, maybe I'm a little bit behind the party or a little bit late to the party. I don't know. But I found out last night that Lightcast, along with Zeverfet, and then executive produced by Nicotina, um, they're making some sort of motion comic that takes the storyboards from Zack Snyder's Justice League, the ones that were released um, at the museum, they're going to turn it into a motion comic. I don't know how I feel about this. Um, I mean, well, I, I, I kind of want to wait for Austin to get here to, before I talk about it. Um, but I'd like to get your guys' input. What do you guys think about this motion comic idea? Do you guys think it's a good idea or a bad idea? They seem to have gotten a lot of people on board with it, uh, including Ray Porter, um, Sam Benjamin. Uh, I see a lot of art um, from Ryan and uh, Marissa. Is it Maria or Marissa? Um, I'm not sure. But um, I just don't know where I stand on this yet. Uh, so I don't want to say anything that's out of line. Um, but with that being said... The person is going to keep me in line as when they arrive. <laughs> I like that the person is going to. What's up, man? Nothing much, dude. How you doing? Oh, it's uh, it's a good morning for me. Actually, not. I woke up about about an hour ago. Uh, but uh, yeah, 
I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm I'm, I'm uh, checked all the news. See what uh, saw what was up on Twitter. Saw Black Adam. Saw you know, yeah, it's pretty things. dope, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's a. I do want to talk so, about. This is the first thing. This yeah. is the first thing that I found. But did you know Drake Bell got put on probation? Yes. Yes. For child he, endangerment. He done be grooming the young girls. Um, that's, what is uh, happening there? This was kind of upsetting for me too. I'm gonna be honest. I was a Drake, Drake Bell. Like a, I'm a I like Drake Bell fan. I liked Drake Bell. I even liked, liked. his music. I re- I even had his. I even bought you like, liked his CDs. or you like. I still like Drake Bell. I don't really know what's going on here. Uh well yeah this was this is maybe pretty... if you can explain it I only saw the headline and it's a so, child endangerment and that can mean a lot of different things he pleaded guilty he admitted to it Ple- he pled guilty he pled guilty oh my god he started basically talking to this twelve year old girl in two 2000- thousand oh, no. Yeah, I know. I know. Not another one. I know. I know. That's why right. I said it. Okay, it's I don't upsetting. like him anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. That's why I said it. It's upsetting, man, because I, you know, you obviously too. I grew up with Drake and Josh. That was like my number one favorite show of all time. It's the only reason why I watched the first couple seasons of our Carly. Sorry, every oh, I Carly fans. But, you know, Drake and Josh was like, it for me man they, they were so funny they were so much fun and it's such a disappointment you know to uh that is terrible it, it's absolutely horrible but i also see now why he moved to mexico um <laughs> yeah, <Jesus Christ. laughs> i'm not kidding you when i tell you he is absolutely huge in mexico um he has a massive mexican following he but speaks isn't there Spanish an now extradition and- I'm sure, I'm sure there is. Um, it, he, the thing is, is he's not going to get any jail time. That's the okay. kind of. It, but do we know if. Thing. Actually, I don't really want to go. Ugh, I don't even want to think about that. Do we know <sighs> if it was more than talking? Oh, yes. By the time it, by the time she was 15, they were he was having her do inappropriate things. Okay. Yep. Okay. I've, I've, yeah. I've decided that I don't like Drake Bell anymore. I'm... <laughs> Sorry, Drake. We are no longer friends. Uh, I will no longer be uttering the na- your name anymore. All right. Well, that has it. Drake Bell. Going, right. There he is, the child predator. Can't is anyone in Hollywood normal? Please. I is there's a couple. Normal? You know, Chris Pratt seems like a real wholesome, genuine guy. That's all. <laughs> well, I my say. childhood is ruined. Right, <laughs> I know, I know, Jack. It, Dude, trust me, man. Think about and that. You- Drake was talking to a girl that's young enough to not well, even know what Drake and Josh is. Well, uh, she doesn't even know that Drake and Josh is a real thing. Yeah, that's it's, terrible. It's absolutely. In other absolutely news, disgusting. Yeah. In other news, Judge Judy's ending after twenty-five seasons. No, Judge yep. Judy, don't go. Judge, Ju- Judge Judy's going to handle that case. Is that her final? She's going to handle the Drake Bell Drake case, case one yeah. last time, one final hurrah, and then she's out. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> well, she's got. I hear she's got something else. For she's her. got more and money than God. She is so filthy rich. Um, it's, it's she made like I think it's upwards of like a million dollars highest, per I'm episode. Pretty sure she's the highest paid person on television, probably. Um, probably like uh, on television like if if you're not like a cross movie star you know what i mean right yeah um, yeah even I mean, then she might have some movie stars beat you know i, I think i heard the, the top paid one she is, is Kevin Costner rich. for yellowstone but i feel like she might make more because he makes 10 million an episode there but she she's her net worth is and so I, I hear she's got other something else planned in the works, a sequel show or something. So we'll, why not we'll see. just hang it up? She's done, been, look at her. She's, done a, it she's, all. A little, she's a little fireball, man. She she's hasn't got the energy. Thirty-five years. Nope, exactly. So she's got the energy. So, and you know, I, I I love it when you know, it, it's kind of like I, Martin Scorsese, man. You know, it's like I hope he never quits as long as he's got that energy, and and she seems to have that energy, and and so I say go for it, uh, and I'm sure she'll make a lot of money doing whatever she does next. Whatever, yeah, whatever she does next. Like, <laughs> even just like consultation, consultation yeah. with duty. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but uh, so so, a lot of stuff going on, and you brought something yes. to my attention last night, but we won't get into that yet. 
Uh, that's okay. kind of what I, I want to close with. Um, okay. But let's start with this. So Scarlett Johansson did an interview the other day, and she had some comments on the scumbag that is Joss Whedon. <laughs> yeah. So what's going on? Yeah. Now? So, so, oh, so basically man. what she says is she Ooh. praises his joke writing. She goes, he's an incredible joke writer. He's an incredible storyteller, an incredible screenwriter. Everybody in Hollywood is like, what scripts were you reading, lady? Uh, but look, um, that was definitely mind puzzler. It's, it's so funny to go back and watch that clip. Uh, because first of all, it's a reference that kind of comes out of nowhere. Like, why the hell are we bringing up Joss? Did someone why bring we... up Joss Whedon? Or nobody she... brought up Joss Whedon. Nobody like. I was gonna say because it was. It looks like a, it looked like it was a panel of people that have all, you know, mostly been with Marvel for a while, uh, and well, know it, that that's probably not a good thing to talk about. I, actually, I most of them were new, actually, and they and they still knew well, it was okay. not a good I thing to talk Kevin. about. I saw it was Kevin. Uh, Kevin, David Harbour, Rachel Wise. Um, okay, so it was Lawrence, actually the casting. I, I kind of like looked quickly. Yeah, I know you. Um, but it, still, it was like, yeah, what was she smoking? Uh, exactly. It, it was so weird because nobody referenced Joss. There was really no need to bring him up. The incredible script and joke writing, you know, somebody put like a picture, like, is this the incredible joke you're writing for? Is, you know, Mark Ruffalo's face in her breast from yes, Avengers yeah. <laughs> and, and somebody said yeah incredible script writing um so it's just so it was so weird Florence Plow Plow um Pew, Pew. 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 my bad Pew. Uh, Pew. 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 oh from her scene in the movie okay got it Florence uh Florence Pooch and um Ray and Rachel Wise and even Kevin Feige all made a face as soon as she said Joss Whedon literally all of their expressions went uh, you know, as into confusion and why she was talking about it. Um, See if I can grab it, the um, grab the, clip. the quote. Yeah, keep going. The, keep going. The quote. Find it. It's, but it's. I don't know. It was so funny to me, just because, and it's so funny because I was talking about it this weekend. I even tweeted uh, something about it, in that you know, looking back at the first two Avengers films, I'm interested to get your perspective because you watched. I, did didn't you you've watched the for the first two Avengers movies recently when in your yes. in your Marvel okay so I love I haven't seen them in maybe three or four years but I argue this and I would love to get your your thoughts on this okay those two movies have not aged well with the superhero genre and how the superhero genre has progressed in my opinion I think when you look at like let's start just with Zack Snyder's Justice League and that being a first ensemble take movie right of of the team up like that is so so incredibly superior to in my opinion to that first avengers movie yeah. as far as the complexity the deepness the epicness and, and i'm i'm not i'm not comparing it's a weird concept i'm only comparing them in they are the first two movies that release as the superhero team ups right as the big ensemble first time team ups that's yes. what i'm comparing and when i compare those two and I look at the both of them, I mean, it's like, it's Zach's is up here. And so I, I, that alone, and even some of the other super movies, superhero movies that have come out since, I think, I just think that Avengers hasn't aged, and Avengers Age of Ultron hasn't aged that well. We've, we've gotten used and liking to a more mature, you know, thing. I did start watching a little bit of Age of Ultron the other day, and I immediately kind of got turned yeah. off because of, of, of that one scene in the beginning of the movie when Ca uh, Iron Man says, oh, shit, and then Captain America goes, language. And language. Like, right. you know, yeah, you know, little things like that that I just thought. So, But I'd love to hear, what do, you, what do you think after seeing those movies recently? Do you think those movies hold up with all this stuff going on? Oh, here we go. Right. All Ooh. right, everybody, let's focus on the facial reactions of Kevin, Rachel, and Florence. You know, and Josh Sweden, an incredible, incredible screenwriter, joke writer, and storyteller. And the Russos, and, you know, and Josh Sweden, an incredible, incredible Florence screenwriter, goes from smile to joke yeah. writer, and storyteller. And the Russos, and, you know, and Josh Sweden, an incredible, incredible screenwriter, joke writer, mm. and storyteller. Dude, she's and the Russos, tits, and, man. you know, and Josh Sweden, and. <laughs> 
They kind of like, they kinda like made her bigger. I'm going to be honest with you also, I, and I did bring this up too. Uh, I think I tweeted something about it because it was like she just came out and complained mm-hmm. that Iron Man 2 was sexist and in, in how they introduced Black Widow. And she she just came out like a couple weeks right, well, ago and said that. Look, and let's, let's take a walk through some of Joss's work. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly, exactly. And that's where they, somebody pulled the picture of Mark Ruffalo. Let's take a, yeah, let's take a walk through. Let's take a walk through Joss's amazing storytelling <laughs> and joke writing. So here yeah. we got here we have some of Joss's work here. Um, so I, I mean, th- this I, I damn it, I should have had both the pictures ready. I love. I just want to say, <laughs> Matt's comment says, "Oh, gee, I just opened this and I thought you had all these guys, all these famous people on the show, like a panel. <laughs> we should have oh, kept really? it up there. We should have kept it up there. Let people deceive a little longer." <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, they were like, "Yeah, as STFU, Scarlet. Oh, I know, right? I see this. <laughs> Isn't that funny, dude? Can you imagine somebody opened that and was like, oh my gosh, they're all like, oh, look at all these. <laughs> How did they get all? How, how did they get them on here? <laughs> um, but I, oh, damn it, I can't find the I can't find the um the picture of uh yeah yeah I, I retweeted it I'll, I'll DM it to you let me see here but uh, I just wanted to go through back through some of uh some of his amazing <laughs> stories Your is his incredible amazing work screen. that he's done over the years and um you know. Wow. <laughs> So, so for anyone who doesn't know, Joss Whedon, um, he made a really big name for himself, really big name for himself when he did Buffy the Vampire Slayer, right? Um, but on the set of Buffy the Vampire Slayer came a lot of back, uh, back behind the scenes issues that we didn't know about until maybe some years later. Um, now we find out after... Um, after the Avengers, after Avengers 2, uh, uh-huh. he comes on and he's brought in to kind of finish Zack's vision for uh, the Snyder Cut original. So 2017 version, right? Correct. Uh, this is really a pivotal moment um, in Joss's career and not for a good reason because um, the cast of Justice League, they were not so privy to Joss uh, right. in the way he treated them in the way the way he presented himself on set as if you were a god amongst, you know, Man. ants, right? Yeah. Uh, I think at one point he told Gal Gadot or he called Gal Gadot Scarlet uh, on several occasions. Uh, he said... He Natasha, th- he, he called her Natasha. Natasha or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he, um, he he straight up that, threatened her career. Yeah, he said he was going to end her career um, and no one would ever work with her again because she wouldn't... So that scene, this one right here that we're that we're looking at, this one, she refu- that's not Gal Gadot. Yeah, she, no, that's a double. She that's absolutely double. refused to be a part of that. And um, I love Gal. She went straight to the executives at Warner Brothers, and that situation was handled you know, yes. right right after. Uh, <laughs> and then, but you know, and, and it sucks because then you get the Ray Fisher thing, right? Yes. Then you get the Ray Fisher situation, Maybe. which was handled very terribly. Terrible. Um, but, and it's well known the cast of Avengers had issues with him on the second film. Yeah, this isn't. The I mean, first he even time. refers to it with Ray Fisher, you know, and goes, "Look, not even Robert Downey Jr. gives me notes." Right. So I can only imagine what how the the butting heads of Robert and this guy. Right. Um, look, at that, look at it. He just looks like a creepy uncle. He looks. He looks like a douche. He looks like um, your creepy nerdy uncle who your parents won't leave you alone with. <laughs> because they they know something's not quite right. The screws right. aren't all tightened. Uh, right, right, right. But Josh is Josh makes me sick. Um, yeah. And for 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 Scarlet to say these things, um, it really aggravates me. It really, it's really, very, really aggravates it's me. It's such a double standard. It's such hypocrisy. Because, like I said, you're going to come out and complain against somebody like John Favreau, who, you know, ad- admittedly, sure. Back in what 2010, when Iron Man 2 was released, and these issues weren't as prevalent, yeah, she was introduced in a sexy black leather suit. And you know, like, so yeah, the see, is, see, the thing about that, Prakash, is um, actually, I'll save this comment for later, but yes, uh, I stay vigilant and I and I, 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 I do what I do, and um. You know, we might not, we not, we might not be having Zack Snyder on 
uh, every other week, but we're focused on talking about films and talking about um, TV and, and things that aren't pop the culture, that. baby. Yeah. Pop we're, culture. We're, we're called the pop culture corner, not the Zack Snyder's justice league corner. So, right. Um, um, but it is, it, you know, it's, it's just, it aggravates me too, man. It really does. Cause it, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. And it, I, I feel like I want to ask her, like, have you been living under a rock for the past two years? Literally, or like, literally. I, yeah. did you miss everything that just like, I, it's pretty surprising. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, pretty surprising, pretty surprising. From her. Uh, but this isn't the first time she's had, uh, you know, issues. You know things like this. So, yeah. um, but so I mean, do you think, do you think that this benefited Joss by her saying this? Do you think? <laughs> so what do you think's going on there? Why? Do you, so, so basically, either one of three things: one, she really respects Joss, and I find that really hard to believe. Number two, he has something on her. <laughs> Number three, they might have had a thing. Look, it's um, maybe, maybe, um, you know, I, I don't know. Look, it could be that, yeah, every once in a while, these guys, they're not assholes to everybody, you know, um, and it just could be that, you well, know. Of course he would pick his favorites and, and he would, and you know, he's not yeah, treat maybe everyone like the, the, the way he exactly. treated, treated Ray Fisher, right? Scarlet exactly. is a brown haired white woman look until zach snyder's justice league we all knew him as a pretty we, like none of this stuff came out you know and he, i would say he was a wolf in sheep's clothing right it, it, like yeah i would you know so it's not the hard best to thing the marvel kinda, cinematic the best thing the marvel ever did was move on from joss before yes. but do you think that they moved on because they knew something yeah, and I don't know if they moved up, but I think he started to show his true colors. That's what happened. You Obviously, on the first, on the first Avengers, yeah, on the first Avengers, he was, you know, he he very good, very very. Good. He came off, so, yeah, and he came back with, I think, not only with the attitude of like, okay, I have leverage now because I made a good movie and the movie made a bunch of money and all that, but I think also, he, yeah, like you said, he felt more comfortable. He felt like. Oh, these guys aren't going to fire their billion-dollar director, right? They're not. And at the time, and, Marvel was still working towards being the studio that we now know they are. Exactly. Right? And, and Phase Two was in that time having some difficulties coming yes. off of off of the event. And Iron Man Three wasn't that well received. Uh, Thor: The Dark World wasn't well received. Uh, Age of Ultron wasn't that well received. Right. Um, it did have a little bit of a string of bad luck. It had, there. It had a, it, it wasn't horrible. It wasn't, but obviously they stuck the course. It came through, but you know, hear I that think, DC? Yeah, during, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Listen they to that. They stuck the it, course. They stuck the course, man. They stuck the course. But I think he showed his true colors on that Age of Ultron set. Obviously, like there's, it's well known that he clashed with the with the executives on the story. That he clashed with the cast. Um, and listen, so, I, uh... yeah. I went back and watched it. Yeah. It's yeah. not a good movie. The, it's <laughs> rushed. It's, it's, it's rushed. It's, you don't like the AI thing, right? Mm -hmm. That was probably the best scene. There's good moments. There's, 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 good moments. there's, there's but, moments of like genius. But it's in, such in a Ultron. letdown from right. the first one. But go back. Um, do me, a, do me this favor for anyone who's listening now or in the future. Go back and watch the opening sequence of Age of Ultron and tell me that that's a good film, right? That opening oh, sequence, yeah, I told you. the CGI is so messy. Like at one point, yeah, the, it's it's looking this way, and like, <laughs> and then the next sequence, all of a sudden the camera's at a different angle from the top. That that sequence where like you finally get all the heroes together in their slow motion. Yeah, and, and, right. And, and, I mean, compare that sequence to the slow mo shot from Zack Snyder's Justice League. It's just it's the lead up to that. You know, like it just poops massively on that. Uh, for you, lack of a better word. Um, yeah, I, I completely. I just, agree, I, I just man. don't know I why she said agree. this. Like, if it was unprovoked, right? No one brought Joss Whedon up. Why did she say this? You know, again, I don't know. Like I said, maybe they 
have a they have a good friendship and she didn't see any of this stuff and it's kind of like i relate to the that's like Shirt, uh, saying so- that quentin tarantino didn't know that harvey weinstein was having sex with girls so right. they could get roles in movies right 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 look it's i relate it to the felicia rashad bill cosby thing she didn't see that ugly side of him so mm-hmm. for her I, I would probably guess she's been in and is in a state of denial right. like this was a close friend of hers not you know what so it could be that you know what's i don't know it, it seemed like he did treat her okay on those movies i know she was pregnant on age of ultron and she talks very highly about her time on the first two avengers movies uh so i don't know i it, but i agree with you that it's very weird it's uncalled for and it's it's a little uh since it's everyone's favorite word in these, you know, cancel culture times, it's a little tone deaf, don't you think, Ty? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's very tone deaf. Um, damn, I, I t- I've typed in every single thing now, and I can't find the shot. Oh my gosh! Okay, I have to go deep into. And I like about a thousand things. Ah, <laughs> found it. Here you go. Let me. There's I'm everything here. else. I'm everything DMing else it. is here except that. I got it. I'm DMing it. God damn. God damn go. it. Set, um, set, but let, set. Let, let me know. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know. What do you guys think about, do you think that Joss has something on Scarlett Johansson? Do you think Scarlett's <laughs> just naive or do you think maybe think she's, that there's think something sinister naive. behind it? I think she's just naive because it's not the first time that she's put her foot in her mouth with her comments. Um, you know, she's done this kind of regularly. Actually, she gets criticized like every year for something she says. Um, I, uh, last year is because she was going to take a role, I think, as a trans woman or something like that. Yeah, um, she was. No, no, no. She. Yeah, yeah. She's going to be a trans. Yes, yes. Instead of giving it to an actual, actual trans, trans woman. person. We, yeah, and so, um, so, and and again, obviously, and then there was the ghost in the shell controversy. So she has a, a bit of a, a tone. Yeah, deafness. this is there Joss Whedon's work, by the way. This incredible. Is his, this is his incredible writing. storytelling and joke writing and. <laughs> Doesn't that look really similar All right. uh, to anyone? Is that just me? <laughs> oh, my god! And the, at least it's... Wonder Woman's costume is, like, metallic. And, like, it probably shielded Flash from, like, actually laying on her right. literal breasts. And but I just find Mark, it... Ruffalo's, Mark Ruffalo's head is literally in between. He is motorboating her. Yeah, since I'm not on camera, you know. Yeah, but uh, he's literally <laughs> motorboating her. Like, like there's no way, you, unless that's a double, which I don't think it is. Uh, yeah. Scarlet, I do not think that's a double. Um, she would have probably, you know, they were all friends at the time. She was probably like, yeah, go ahead, don't, don't worry about it. You know, it's yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's Mark Ruffalo. His head's in my tits. Like, <laughs> yeah. But then we have women. That then we have women that all over the country all over the country fighting for equality yet Joss Whedon is you know was allowed <laughs> to do these things right so <laughs> Marco Ruffalo is blowing his nose <laughs> <laughs> he's face planted this is this, this he is not and and listen and then what, what the the charisma carpenter stuff uh, if you haven't heard about any of that, oh, right. if you haven't heard any about about any of the Chris Carpenter stuff with Joss Whedon, look into that, and then tell tell me there's coincidences here, because it's not coincidental. Joss Whedon is a predator. Talk about predators when we talk about Drake Bell. Joss Whedon falls into that category. He's yeah. a disgusting human being, and he makes me sick. I agree. I agree. Um, I agree. Oh, I, I'll be honest. I, I, again, looking back, and it's it's not to be like that person that like oh because this happened his movies are bad or like because I do believe in separating talent from. Okay, all right. So you, like, te- very upset at Kevin Spacey. Don't like Kevin Spacey. Very mad, right? Mm-hmm. But the guy is a damn good actor. A damn good actor. I think you you, you can't you'll never be able to okay. deny you'll never be able to deny him that he's a terrible human being. He should never work in Hollywood again. But this I can't even. I, feel like I can't even. 
even though he is, some yeah. indie movie I, or something like that. I know, I know. Someone, um, someone dared to bring Spacey back. I know, which we'll see what happens there. But my my point being is that I feel like you can't make that argument for John. He's not that great of a talent. He's not talented enough to keep no. around. You, no. know, like, you know, like people like to think. I mean, I mean, listen. There's no lie. Like Firefly. Um, uh, I mean, I never Buffy. saw Firefly or Buffy. Firefly is like a cult classic, and so is in Buffy. I have heard right? about that. Yeah. He he is a good writer. I don't think he's a good director. Um, mm-hmm. He's a good I writer. Would... I'll give him that. Him and jo- jo- uh, Jeff Johns, they, they can write well. They write mm-hmm. good stories. They write compelling stories. But when it comes to them, but like th- then again, like anyone can, I could write a good story, right? One or two mm-hmm. times. But um, it's about consistency. It's about being able to do it all the time, right? It's about being 100%. able to come up with these things all the time. And Josh has not done that. Josh has a couple good things under his belt, but the yeah. the negatives outweigh the positives every single time. I have a question for you. Um, you because you've kind of dipped your toe into filmmaking and, and the industry and things like that, as have I. And so I, I understand that there are certain like directors, you know, because from the from the beginning it. Like when this all started and Joss was getting accused of stuff, it wasn't sounding like he was, you know, a pedophile or anything yet, but that he was just kind of more so a stern director, you know, which I do. He was a hands on director. Right. Which I do. Involved. Which I do find different, right? I can, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I know directors can be assholes and stuff, but, you know, as long as they don't go to a place of like, yeah being a pedophile or doing weird shit like Joss does, you know, I'm, I'm in a certain sense, okay with it. But of, of course, with this whole, you know, culture going on now, that seems to be like no longer a thing. What do you think of, of that kind of style? And, and is that okay? You know, in, in uh, today's society. Can you, can you rephrase that? Yeah. Um, so the kind of aggressive directing style, hands on, like uh, you said, high, yes, hands on yes, directing yes, yes. style. Do you think that, that's appropriate in today's, you know, if it, as long as it's not going to a place of being weird or, you know, being a pedophile, whatever do you Locking think it's appropriate someone in, in a closet. Right. Yeah, exactly. You think it's appropriate in, in today's. Yeah, it depends. Kind of world. Yeah. It, it depends. Cause again, and we, and we talked about this a little bit the last couple of days is like for people, and I'm not saying Quentin Tarantino is like this. I'm no, saying, right, yeah. There are certain people like Quentin Tarantino who get grandfathered into certain ways of of doing things. So I think, mm-hmm. you know, if it's like a director who's been around for a long time, no, they don't do the, the kind of, these kind of weird things uh, right. where, where to women especially. Um, I guess if you're a little bit more hands on, maybe if you're a little bit aggressive, but 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 aggressive when it comes to filmmaking, like the way you talk to people maybe isn't the nicest, right? No, you, th- that's you know who's different. a good example? Like <clears throat> David O. Russell. David O. Russell, I'm, I'm sure you can. Yeah. He's not, uh, you know, s- being sexual, or, but he's a, he is aggressive. He's yeah. aggressive. He gets in there. If he doesn't get the take that he likes, if, if he's trying to, if you're angry in a scene, he will piss you off yes. in real life. To get heckle that. you and, yes. and, and, uh, he'll do things to get under your skin just so you're that raw real emotions there that's different yes. um what joss does is manipulation yeah joss manipulates you into thinking that he can control your career right yeah. when he yeah. tells when he tells gal gadot who is power like that who's yeah. a literal she's like she's up and coming if i've ever seen up and coming right yeah like Gal Gadot, there's demand for Gal right now. And mm-hmm. to tell her that he'll end her career, I mean, that as a woman, as a woman in Hollywood who's already three steps behind. Yeah, you're already in an uphill battle. battle. Yeah, you're already in an uphill battle because you're a woman in Hollywood. Yeah. It doesn't sure. matter if you're a, if you're Wonder Woman or not. Black right. Widow, Black Widow, I can promise you. Like uh, Scarlet, she didn't always make just as much money as the other guys. No. She didn't. This is plain and simple. She did yeah. not. Neither did um, neither did any of the other women in 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 the Avengers world. Um, 
it, it really took Gal Gadot stepping up and becoming the face of a franchise to, yeah. to kind of break that mold. Now Gal is being paid the way she's supposed to be paid. But Gal did that first Wonder Woman movie. No, no, no. Was it the first Wonder Yeah, I think it was the first Wonder well, Woman yeah. movie. Yeah. She did it for far less money than, say, um, Ben Affleck, right? She did it for far oh, less money. Right, she wasn't getting right. paid nearly as much. So when you're already facing an uphill battle as a woman yeah. in Hollywood for a white male, right? Your white male showing um, for, for a white male to, to, to basically lock you in a closet and say, I'm going to end your career. Yeah. That's going to be don't scary. Do what I say. That's got to be scary uh, as, as a woman, right? It's horrible. It's um, horrible. I mean, and, and, it, and a guy who's made the Avengers, a guy who's made yeah. Buffy the Vampire Slayer is telling you that he's going to end your career. If you don't let Ezra Miller, who is a sweetheart, by the way, uh, yeah, lay on your chest then it's over that's it right. like god right. god god forbid we needed real a real scene to be done and there was a little bit of a tussle over it right, right, right. what would he have said then um he's he's the the ray fisher thing where ray fisher didn't want to say booyah joss threatened him then and then J yeah. jeff johns like joss and joss is gone from twitter after receiving death threats because oh, people good, yeah. people literally well, told them that they were going to kill him. Yeah. Um, and you know what? I would look the other way. Honestly, yeah, I, I would. <laughs> Actually, I, don't, I don't, I really don't think anyone deserves death, but I do right. think that he deserves to be in a prison cell. Yeah. Um, yeah, I completely agree. Mav says he gets off on power and that's exactly, yeah. A lot of these guys that, yes. You know why you he know, gets off him, on power? Harvey Weinstein, they get off, you know, Wein, no, no, no. Wein, yeah, you're right. You're, no, no, you're right. Is it Weinstein or Weinstein? Is Weinstein? Brett Weinstein. Yes. Okay. So it's Weinstein. Um, Weinstein. Because there's Brett Weinstein, and then there's Harvey Weinstein. Weinstein. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I always get them mixed up, but um, <laughs> they they don't want to be associated with each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's <just a> terrible <laughs> last um, name. You know why Joss probably gets off on power is because he was probably made fun of his whole life. He was probably mocked. He was probably mm -hmm. bullied, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same reason, like, the bully get, becomes a cop, right? Yeah. Um, it's because of the power aspect. Um, yeah. So when Joss became, all of a sudden, you know, he wasn't just this, you know, ginger who was losing his hair. He, you know, <laughs> loser who, who, you know, lived in his mother's basement. All of a sudden, he just... He was responsible for Firefly and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh my God! Now, yeah. the, now Marvel Studios wants him to do the Avengers. Yes, of course. Power corrupted him. Yeah. Power corrupted him, and he thought that he was better than everyone, and he thought that he could get away with it. And it wasn't until Zack Snyder's Justice League original, the 2017 the version, truth. that no. someone stood up to him and said no. Oh, wait, wait, wait. They planted themselves like a tree and said, no, you move. That's yep. a Sharon Carter reference, by the way. Uh, yep. And that was in Civil War. Um, but yeah, so Joss Whedon, honestly, don't come back. Yeah. Don't come back because yeah. you're not wanted. You're not wanted here. Uh, not just to a woman, but to almost anyone, it must be scary. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially if you're an up-and-coming actor, right? You're, you're yeah, fighting the director. for roles. Of somebody that of that level, yeah, absolutely, it's terrible. And then you finally get your big break, and you're on a Marvel movie, right? You're yeah. in the Avengers, like that girl who played um, uh, Choi, not Choi, um, the Ch Chow. Uh, she she's the one who like, uh, she was the scientist that like uh did the regenerative tissue. She like helped uh Ultron be created. She was the Chinese okay. woman. Um, okay. imagine being her, right? Who doesn't have a lot of credits in Hollywood. And imagine Joss telling her, I'm going to, I'm going to ruin your career. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You get your final, you get your big break in Hollywood. You're in a Marvel movie on a big Marvel movie, not just a solo film, but the team up Avengers film. And you have the director telling you he's going to ruin your career. That's it. Yeah. Right. You feel like yeah, your life's yeah. over. Uh, and that could have, these could, these things, these interactions could have went a lot different way. Right. Someone gets told that, they, they start losing faith in themselves. Who knows what they do to themselves, right? Yep. So that yep. could have been a lot more dangerous. Like, Joss is lucky that no one hurt themselves because of what he said. Right, right. Yeah. You know? Yeah, So I agree. 
Um, I mean, it sucks to talk about, right? It sucks to talk about, but Scarlett Johansson, listen, I don't know why you made the comments, but I really do think, I don't want you to apologize. I don't, do not apologize. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't get out with your white background and John Cena apologize to Taiwan. Don't do that. But maybe next time don't bring up Joss Whedon because yeah. I think Marvel wants to distance themselves from Joss yeah. as yeah. far as they can get. Yes. So, Yes, um, yes, yes. Stay yes. away. Stay away from him. Um, but let's let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Um, guess what? What? what, what Rock, is, oh, oh, oh! The Rock shared the first look. That's right. At Black Adam, and here it is. Look at this is the 13. first look. Incredible, man! Wow. No, she, this is the first go. look. Do you think this wow. is where the the wizards were? Do you think this is that spot? <sighs> Man, it could what be. What do you think is going on here? It looks like, uh, yeah, there's this. He is looks great in take... the suit. The suit looks oh, really detailed. That suit, it, it very much does remind <laughs> me of kind of like the it detail reminds... of, of the Superman suit. Yeah, it reminds um, me of the, the, the Black Adam comic book suit, how it leaves yes. a lot of his like neck area open. Oh, open, yes, yes, yes. You know, and, and um, uh, I'm sure that um, he does, he wears a cape. No, he doesn't wear a cape. He does not wear a cape. No, he does not wear a cape. Yeah. So this is this is his full form right here. Um, Yes. And it's a back shot. There seems to be some sort of runway. Um, As you guys can tell, there is a lot of um. There's practical mixed with green screen. Um, but it there's a lot of rocks and stuff. This uh, this could be the palace of the wizards, like the palace of the Shazamily, um, or it could just be taking place um in the in that place that he, he now rules over. I always forget right. the name of, of the place. Um, I'm not, I'm not that familiar with it either. Um, but I know what you're talking about. It definitely matches with the new Shazam suits. That's for sure. Um, yes. hundred percent. Um, but the, so, so this, I mean, what do you, what are you getting from this? I mean, there's a lot of dirt. There's a lot of, uh, like rocks. Like, so this right. could be somewhere in the desert. Right, somewhere. could be. It, it kind of. It does look a little bit like. Um, I know his origin takes place in ancient, in the ancient past. Um, you know, so it could be something there. Um, I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know. I, I. I will say though, this does get me excited. I love, love, love the detail of the suit. Um, it's just again, it's just, this. That's just from the back. It looks incredible. There's another picture he put on the other day of they put tracking uh, dots all over him right. to show when he's when he is gonna power up or whatever. Okay. His his real veins, you know, he had them popping in the picture, and so whatever the CGI, but it's gonna be his real veins, like you know, coming out more or whatever. I don't know what they're gonna do, but he was talking about like there's gonna be a lot of like practical real like. I mean, just look at him. He looks like Black Adam, man. And, and the detail of that suit in his back, he looks amazing. It looks I, – I cannot wait for this movie. Um, I hope uh, I hope we see a different side of acting from The Rock. Uh, but I'm, I'm super excited for it. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but Black Adam, you know, he originally debuted uh, uh, in the Golden Age of comics. Correct. So that's like Correct. the 1945, um, you know, that's that 1945 era. Right? Uh, right. And the owners of Black Adam and his rival, the hero Shazam, um, <clears throat> um, what, where was I going with that? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but, the writer? Like, but, but like Batman's iconic arch enemy, the Joker, Black Adam was originally intended as a one off villain, but it wasn't <laughs> until after the popularity that came back from the comic run that they were like, no, we want this guy back. We, right. like, we we want this guy back. Like like and and then from there he became Shazam's Joker. You know what I mean? Like he's yep. the the version of uh you know he's the 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 bad version the the one who wants to see um Shazam fall. And he and he uh, would you call Black Adam a villain or an antihero? I don't know him that well. But I would say, from what I have read and from what I know, he's he's kind of an anti-hero. He he tends to 
Well, he becomes an anti-hero. Right. He tends to work and, and do whatever kind of benefits him okay. the most, um, from what I can tell. Um, but also, I've seen I have seen him team up with the uh, with the heroes. Yes, of course. but it's not necessary. The Joker has also teamed up with. Right, right. It's not guys. necessarily out of because he's a good guy. It's more of they kind of all have the same goal or cause of defeating you know something or someone. Or, something, you know. something. Because all right, so listen, this is the way I put it. Right, villains are villains only because there's a world to be in a villain in. So if there's mm-hmm. a threat that's going to, you know, uh, if there's gonna threat that's gonna end the world, well, they're gonna be ended too, right? They're, right. Gonna, they're not gonna be able to terrorize Batman if Batman's uh, killed in 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 killed in action. So sometimes, yep, yep. sometimes villains team up with the heroes in order to continue being a villain. Yeah. Right. Uh, as we saw in Zack Snyder's Justice League, right? The Joker, Deathstroke. They're teamed up with our heroes because right. it's the lesser of two evils that is really the problem, right? Yeah. So they're the lesser of the two evils uh, is working with the Justice League in order to preserve the world so that they can go back to the way it was. The back to the way it was, yeah. So the Batman's working with Joker, and he knows once they solve that issue, well, the Joker's just going to go back to wanting to kill Batman or yeah, yeah. you know that fight. But that's okay. Because right now we have a job to do, so I feel like that's kind of like the arc we're going to see Black Adam take, kind of like right. the Loki arc. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Uh, Just I, more I, dark. A little bit more darker. It seems definitely like. a lot more darker. But I think Black Adam will. The way we see him orig- like the first time, he's going to be a pure villain. But along so. the way, along the way, he's going to take you know lessons. He's going to lose. He's going to. Uh, be broken down, and I think that's gonna, you know, his arc's gonna be really fun to watch. Yeah, I agree. And uh, unlike Shazam, Black Adam doesn't call upon the Greek gods, he calls upon right. the gods of the Egyptian myth. The reason right. for this change in different eras of DC continuity, uh, more on that in a bit though. Um, but taking up the mantle of Egypt, I'm reading something by the way. Oh, okay, taking up the mantle of Egypt's protector, Teth. Adam Forge's relationship with the wizard Nabu, the magical entity that lives inside the Helm of Fate, possessed by the magical DC superhero Dr. Fate, who will also appear as part of the JSA in the Black Adam movie. And even Prince Kafu, who would later be reincarnated as Hawkman, who would also appear in the film as uh, part of the JSA. Mm-hmm. Um, so when his homeland of Kandak is destroyed by the immortal menace of Vandal Savage and a villain wow. named Akhtan using the Orb of Ra uh, in comic book continuity empowers the shape-shifting elemental hero Metamorpho. Teth Adam loses control, goes on rampage, forcing the wizard to trap him in a magical scarab buried in a tomb. Centuries later, the scarab is uncovered by Theo Adam, the treacherous assistant of archaeologists Archaeologists Cece and Mary Batson. Does that sound familiar? Yep. There we go. The uh, Billy Batson, Mr. Sh- Mr. Shazam parents. himself. Yep. Yes. Billy Batson's parents. Theo becomes Black Adam's mortal counterpart. Mortal counterpart. The same way Billy is Shazam's alter ego. Uh, this story will likely be altered in Black Adam. Uh, the movie, given the Shazam movie, removed the Batsons' archaeology background from Billy's backstory. But we have more to talk about. We have more to talk about with Black Adam. Uh, I'm, I am trying to find where he's fr- what, what he he rules over a certain place, uh, and I can't remember the name of it for some reason. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, I'm not. Again, I'm not too familiar with it. I'm, I, I I will. Uh... Yeah, you know, I'll try and find some uh, some Black Adam. Maybe you can recommend some Black Adam comics for me to uh, to look into before the movie comes out because I would like to to know a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, how I, how how excited are you for this movie? Though? I'm very excited. I really am. I'm very excited because the little bit that I do know about Black Adam has me intrigued enough. Um, you know, and obviously. Uh, I, 
I'm, I'm interested of, to see what The Rock does with this. I think this is a big step for The Rock. And if he can do this well, I'm, very inter- I'm super interested. I'm super interested to see where it goes. I did, And I like Shazam, too. I also look forward to it. Hopefully one day he might uh, have to go against Henry Cavill's Superman. I know That's uh, the, plan. the Rock is very adamant on, uh, on that, and I would hope that that would come to fruition, and, and that also gets me excited. <laughs> Uh, it's definitely not Condock. Is it Condock? That doesn't sound right. Guys in the comments, can you guys let me know? Um, wh- th- there's a place that, uh, Black Adam rules over, um, for years and years and years, right? After he was in chains, yada, yada. Uh, and I can't remember the name of it for some reason. Um, but it's driving me nuts. Literally, it's driving me nuts now. <laughs> Whatever, whatever. Uh, I'll think of it. I'll think of it. But I'm, I'm really hoping. Um, I mean, so we know Black Adams bringing in the JSA. Are you familiar with the JSA at all? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Yes. So, so Doctor Fate, Fate yep. is going to be a pivotal part of this story. Yeah. Um, I promise. There's no. There's. There's a reason Doctor Fate's being included in this story because, like, for Doctor Fate. You, you almost kind of want to use him now, right? Like, not in, like, a past sense, but yeah. you want to use him now. But I think if I think he fits perfectly in what Black Adam is trying to do, right? With the, the JSA and the fight between um, Black Adam um, and the JSA. I'm assuming the JSA is trying to stop Black Adam from um, seeking revenge on the entire planet, right? Because... Basically, we see from DC fandom, though we had a lot of concept art of the rock in chains, Mm -hmm, like Black mm -hmm. Adam was in chains, right? Mm -hmm. And it was because he was imprisoned, uh, because he went mad with power. Uh, And and, and from there, you know, he escapes, yada, yada. uh, And then he goes on a literal, literal psycho spree, um, seeking revenge on everybody. And that includes the new Shazam, right? So he finds out that Billy Batson has become the Shazam. Um, and then there's a Shazam Ali, right? And he feels betrayed. So he seeks to destroy them. Yeah. Um, and I'm really looking forward to, I know that it's not going to be in the second Shazam movie, but the third Shazam movie, I can promise you that black Adam's going to be the main adversary. Oh, I can, pro- I, yeah. I promise. I'm sure. I'm sure. I promise you this. Because that's the way they're setting it up, and I think that's a great way to do it. Right. Uh, because, listen, you could have, yeah, you could have made it work somehow where Black Adam was in Shazam too, but I don't think it was. We weren't. I don't think we were ready for that. Yeah, and and exactly. I like that they're taking their time with this I, character. I, yes, that's I want good, them to. Do, is, I want them to do a good properly. character to do that. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, The Rock's been waiting to be Black Adam for like fourteen years. Yeah, so, a long uh, time. I'm pretty sure I trust the, I, you know what? There, and I wouldn't say this if I didn't absolutely mean it. I honestly trust the rock making sure that black Adam gets done. Right. Yes, I do. Because he has such a passion. Think about if you spent 14 years, like ready to play a character or at least working towards wanting to play a character. Right. Yeah. Um, you, you, you kind of like, you kind of form a bond with that that idea and that character. I'm sure The Rock loves Black Adam just as much as I do, right? Or right. Maybe, probably be more, probably more. Um, and I'm, I'm I'm I just like I trust Kevin Feige to do right with the Marvel films. I'm trusting The Rock to make this Black Adam movie. Do it's gonna? I think it's gonna be really good. I'm yep. and I'm really excited for it. I really am. I am too. I am too. You want to get into some juicy stuff? Yeah, man. Um, I, I kind of uh, I just I, I let me go use the bathroom real, real, real quick. Oh, Jesus. Real quick. I know. Right, yeah. I, I'll be right back. All right, guys. Just me again. Um, so yeah, I mean, are you guys excited for Black Adam? Let me know in the comments. Uh, and if you haven't, like I said already, guys, um, please, please, please consider donating. Uh, my mother passed away from breast cancer. Uh, three months ago, um, sorry, 
my mother passed away three months ago from breast cancer. Um, so we're, we're looking to start a tribute foundation uh, for my mother uh, in the name, well, in the name of my mother to help support uh, one woman per year for five years and then double it every five years. Um, so we're seeking money to start that tribute foundation so that we can help one breast cancer patient each year for five years. And again, double it uh, every five years. It would mean a lot to me if you could donate, even if it's a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, I don't care. Um, but as long as we get the donations. Uh, our goal for the month is $500, all membership fees, all super chats. So send a super chat. Uh, if you do, if you don't know how to donate, maybe send a super chat for five six dollars. That money is going to go towards uh, the charity as well. All that money, the membership fees, the super chats, any other third party donations, they're all going towards starting this tribute fund in my mother's name. This is really personal to me, guys. Uh, so I would really, really, really appreciate it if you can help me out on this. Um, I I'm I made the I made the fundraiser yesterday. Uh, I ha I'm about to donate. I'm going to donate a hundred of my own dollars um, in, uh, but it would be really mean a lot. If you guys can't donate, uh, please share the link on social media and maybe we can get this thing rolling and we can get someone else to donate. Um, <clears throat> I get not everyone can donate. Not everyone has extra money, um, but, but sharing it is literally free. So if you could do that for me, um, I would truly, truly appreciate it, guys. Uh, you know I love you. You know I love you. I love every single one of you guys that turn out. I love all of y'all. I love talking about my favorite movies with you guys. But, uh, you know, this is for my mom. I'm taking it seriously. And we're looking to help other people that were in my mother's situation. So uh, it's for a really good cause, guys. Uh, and I would love for you to be a part of it. So please let me know. Uh, if you have any questions on donations, DM me if you have to if you need any other information, let me know. I can provide that for you. Um, and all the links are in the description. Uh, and maybe I can include one in the comments here if I can find it real quick. Um, but I, I, like I said, I, I really appreciate it from you guys. You guys are the literally the best best audience that I've, you know, that I could have asked for. Uh, and 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 I, every day when I wake up, I'm reminded of just how much you guys mean to me. So. Uh, the link, I just um, put it in the comments. <clears throat> if you could donate there, we're going to be starting the charity. Uh, we're going to be starting the tribute fund so that one patient per year can apply. We'll, we'll probably get multiple applications, but we'll choose one of those people um, and we'll give them all the money that we have for the year um, and all That's the awesome. money that we've collected throughout the year. And people don't realize that when you're in, when you have a disease like breast cancer, Yes, medical insurance might cover a lot of things, right? Like your treatment and stuff. But you know what it doesn't cover? It doesn't cover things like maybe buying a wig, you know, doing all these other things that come with it. Um, going to the store and getting, um, you know, bandages. Those yeah. those aren't covered, right? So these things need, also need to be taken care of. So, you know... Any dollar, any any amount goes such a long way. You have no idea. Um, yeah. So that's what we're looking to do. I'd really appreciate it if you could share the link, donate yourselves, uh, spread the word, guys. Uh, from me to you, um, I know my mother would be proud. So um, with that being said, thank you. Uh, on to the next and our not final topic, but um, I'm going to let Austin take the lead on this. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm not sure I'm... I'm not sure I, I'm, I'm allowed to. You're not sure you're allowed to? <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so, yes. The uh, the Justice League, Dreamscapes of Justice League Emotion comic. Obviously, it was something that was announced last week um, by Lightcast. Lightcast is um, behind it as well as uh, some others in the, in the, in the Snyder youtube community um and so that was a, a, announced last week it's going to be a motion comic that follows the original storyboards uh that were released was it early this year or yeah, last it like, year it was it was a couple years a uh, couple months before uh um, couple, couple months before the couple Snyder months right couple months before the snyder cut um 
So it's going to adapt those into a motion comic. Uh, they're, Listen, they're... I'm not. I'm not going to lie about something. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is the this is part of like the Green Lantern stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, it looks really good. Yeah, I look, the artwork I'm, I'm, looks fantastic. I'm going to say I I actually I am looking forward to this. I I do I like the idea. Um, and I, yeah, I, as you said, look, it looks good. They are working with people. Uh, Snyder's work with the way these kind of fan films are. It is a fan project works is that as long as nobody involved makes money uh they nobody can sue them nobody can do anything to them so they're going to take all the profits are you sure and look snyder himself said in an interview that he he could technically do do it as as a fan quote unquote fan film um it might be of course the most expensive fan but but as long as nobody behind the project Nobody. Everybody has to be working on a volunteer basis. Uh, they won't get in any trouble. They'll be completely okay. fine. Okay. Um, and so that's uh, that's what they're doing. Uh, they have uh, some some really cool comic artists involved. They have some some people yeah, the that art we looks know. Amazing. The art. Listen, I'm not I'm not I'm not d- downplaying the art. I'm not downplaying right. the people that are involved. Uh, and, and look, uh, they got. I Ray just Porter, don't think Henry this is Lennox. their place to do. I, I don't think that. I don't think those storyboards. And yeah, dude. Even if Zack Snyder himself or God himself came down and said, "Here, you can do this," mm-hmm. it's still. I don't think that it's their place to do. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying. Look, uh, look, look. Take no offense to this. Um, please, I, I promise you, I, I mean this in the, the most respectful way possible. I probably won't watch it. I, I probably won't. I probably won't watch it. Um, I, I, it's not something that I'm interested in. Um, I, I don't think it's for them to do. I don't think that this is something that the fans should be doing. I mean, yeah, it's kind of cool. Like they got Ray Porter, they got Sam Benjamin, they got a, a bunch of cool artists. I mean, they got Zebra Fett doing a lot of the, the artwork as well. I love all those people. I love them. I just don't think this is the place. Like I think if anyone should be doing this, it, it should be Zach. That's it. And, and look, um, obviously this is why I love this show. Um, is because look, we can we can disagree and kind of talk about it and 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 everything. I don't know if it's this, free, Jack. I, I this is it's actually, to be. I, I probably um, if it's not whatever profit goes towards AS, ASFP, as far yes. as I know. Um, and listen, that's awesome. That's awesome, right? If, yeah. if all the if all the money goes towards suicide prevention, I'm all for that. That's 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 great. I look, I'm just saying that the project itself. Yeah. It's a cool idea. It's a cool, like, it's a cool thing. Yeah. I just don't <laughs> think it's anyone's, I don't think it's any one of our places to do. And I would just like to, to, to say this and, and look, I, I kind of agree with you, but at the same time, I, I'm starting to move more and more away from that type of thinking. I'm, I'm finding just because it, I see what you're saying, dude, but at the end of the day, these aren't Snyder's characters. They're not. No, but no, no, no. But Snyder was not, given the rights to the characters. Right. Not, 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 not. He, like he didn't sign paperwork, and now he owns right, the right, characters. Right, 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 right. Warner Brothers allowed him to use the characters to make the story that they wanted him to make. Right. right. That's not the case. That's happening here. Mm-hmm. They're taking it into their own hands, and they're taking storyboards. But here's the thing: we would never get this story, anyways. Like, there's, there is no, there is no realistic universe where we get this story in any other format besides what we're getting it now. Right, but what if because Warner Brothers had plans to do this maybe years from now? Now they can't they, because it's already been done. Why not? What do you mean? They could not? totally still it. They could still totally still do it. I don't see but, why but, they but would. But then will always be there'll always be the question of, oh no no no, they copied our idea. Well, no no no, you don't actually own the rights to the characters. They do. I think for me, I think it just makes it makes Warner Brothers look more stupid. It, you know, because it's like why why aren't they jumping on this? The fans are having to do it. Um, 
I just, I look. I there's this whole thing in the in the Snyder fandom. This whole it just seems I, it seems idea. like another way to get, like get on Zach's radar. Right. Uh, well, that's I, what, that's well, what it seems to me. It seems like a P- PR tactic. Look, I don't know the intentions of of these people. I do know some of the people. There are there in, are friends involved. Too. Some of them are our friends. And, and that's there are why, some. Yeah, yeah. I, that's I why like, I'm not saying anything. Any of these things lightly, right? Look, it, uh, it, it, great Porter came out this this weekend. He made a tweet, you know, and he was like, "I decided to do something that I thought would be good," and people were attacking him for it. I, you know, I saw all the all the tweets. Attacking him for what? People were attacking Ray Porter for being involved and saying that he's basically now given up hope, stopped, um, stopped. You know, all he's he's now working against the Snyder, the restore the Snyderverse stuff by doing this, and that I think is it, it's what taking about it Sam? W- way too far. Sam Benjamin Henry, yeah, nobody got on Sam or Henry for some reason. They just all jumped on Ray. Henry Lennox. Oh, and Lennox is a part of it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, because they've had all three of them on the show. That makes sense. Um, you know, and it's Harry Lennox, by the way. Oh, ha- Harry, Harry. <clears throat> yeah. Um, you it's know, okay. so How do you say it. Yeah, I, I look. I'm, I'm just. So is I'm Ray getting, getting back to do the voice of Dark Side? I don't know. Like, is I, it, I don't, are there voices? Like, I, I, I'm a little confused as to, I think. Yeah, it's voiced. It's voiced. Or is it uh, like narrated? Da- as far as I know, da- Dawson's like voicing a character. You know, I, I believe uh-huh. Wonder Meg is voicing a character. You know, like. It, the besides the the main the main cast that they have, um, I don't know if Ray is. I think he's returning as Dark Side and as the narrator, but I'm not quite sure. Um, y- you know, I look. I as far as I know, the reason I fell in love with these characters is because everybody loves them for different reasons. Everybody. Everybody, in my mind, everybody owns. Do you these find characters. that this is acceptable? Like, yeah. okay, so so if if this is the only thing we ever get, right? Yeah, is this acceptable as a f- finality? One hundred percent. If it's the only thing, yeah. Look, well, what if this <laughs> look, is the reason that they never do it now? I, it, what why, if but this I don't backfires? see? I don't get. I don't get that argument. I don't get that argument as to why it would be because first of all. Well, it's you guys not, have already it's seen. Not the current, you guys have already played it out yourselves. You guys have already done it. You guys have made it's this. It's not the current Zach it. story. Zach has a whole like different story for him to make. Like this is an adaptation of something that would never happen. Of stories that Zach has said are not relevant. Anymore. So could it fall in? I uh, maybe they're maybe they're filing it under fan fiction. That would that would I, work. I I don't know. There, all I know is the whole everything is based off of those storyboards that were released, you know, that were made in 2016 or 15 or whenever. I was there when Zebra Fett and that whole crew read those. I was there reading it with them, right? Mm-hmm. I was there the day the storyboards dropped, right? I just don't see how you turn <clears throat> like those those pictures when released to the public which they weren't, I'm saying when they leaked, were taken down immediately. You were flagged, yada, yada, everything, the whole night. Yeah. yeah. How are they going to do this then? Without it, Legally. Warner Brothers is going to hit them with copyright strikes. I'm, I'm telling I, you now. I, look, look, at, look at all the, uh, look you at can't, all the Batman if I, if I fan, went to fan films and all if, the other fan films that, that DC yeah, but Star those, Wars those, fan Yeah, but... That's basically what this is. This is basically a fan. The only difference is it's a co- it's a motion comic, and so it's animated. Basically, it, that's the only difference. As long as like they stick to the rules, it, Warner Brothers can't just like they can't do anything to uh, you know the people on YouTube that do Batman fan films or you know all of that type of stuff. Right. So I guess I guess it would have to be under as a fan fan film nonprofit. Right. Correct. So. Um, but listen, I'm happy for them. I'm, 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 I'm happy that they're taking a risk. I like that kind of stuff. I like when people succeed, right? I love, I really do. I love when people succeed at things. Um, I love when people make good stuff, right? Yeah. This, it's just not for me. Yeah. 
It's just not I, for I mean, me. I, I look forward to it. I think, I, I mean, obviously if, if something like that oppor- opportunity ever presented itself to me, I would, I would jump at it. Uh, you know, the opportunity to adapt like something like that. Oh, oh my God. I, 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 I do. I'm looking for, I think, I think this whole thing in the fandom has just gone too, way too far. It's gone too far. You know, the attacks that I saw like against Ray Porter and some of the other people, it was just like, I just you don't know. get why they're attacking them for being a part of it. I mean, I, I, I get, I get how you said it, right? It's like that. It seems like they're abandoning hope, right? I, right. I don't Which, see that. I don't yeah, see I don't that. see that. Yeah. Just because you're doing something else or you're you're helping with something doesn't mean you're abandoning this other thing, right? Um, no, he like Ray is a man of the of the fans, right? Ray loves yeah. The, Loves he working he really with the fans. He loves coming on shows like ours and uh, and and like Ast, and he loves doing it. He loves, and I'm yeah. sure when the opportunity arose to do something good for AFSB, he jumped on it. Yeah. He he loves it. But do you think that by doing this, it jeopardizes? Okay, there's one thing that Ray always told me was he will not jeopardize his standing with Warner Brothers. Right, he won't, because he wants to do future projects with Warner Brothers, like like play Dark Side again. Mm-hmm. Do you think this is counterproductive, in that sense? What no, if Warner no, Brothers no. looks at this and says, "Okay, Ray, okay, who cares? <clears throat> Everybody in Warner Brothers is gonna be gone by the end of next year. Like they have a whole. I I think it's a brilliant time and a brilliant idea to do it." Because now they're just going to piss off these guys who are the executives but can't really do anything, and the executives will be gone by the end by the end of twenty twenty two. Well, they can still do something right now. Yes, they can. It's not they not, could, but you really do you right really now. think? Do you really think with all the scrutiny that Warner is already under, and the purchase that just happened, you don't think somebody there has a little power to say? Yeah, no, you're not. Okay, but involved. okay, well, that then that brings me to another point. Mm-hmm. What if this new company hasn't even been formed yet? What if they wanted to do something like this? They now, still can. Dude, you keep saying you're, that, tell, you're telling true. me you wouldn't see it. Look, see it with look with at, Ben look Affleck at this, and the real actors. You would. You would. Be, I don't know if they would, would get the real actors, but but no, I'm talking what, if what they if, brought Snyder like, back. Like, like if they what, brought Snyder back. If they did a what if kind of scenario, right? Like where some of the actors are there, some of them aren't. Like what if is doing that right now, right? Right, right. So some of the actors voiced their roles. Some of them didn't, but that's okay. But what if this new company coming in had all these plans? They're like, right when we get in there, we're we're doing this. We're doing it hard. But then, you know, um, there, there's just backlash from, from this. Because we don't know how this is going to go. It looks great, by the way. It looks great so far. Um, they've got a lot of great and talented people working on it. Right. But what if I'm just, I'm playing devil's advocate. What if something backfires and this is, is it works against us. That would be bad. I don't see that argument and you would have to really make it because I see this as a win-win situation. I really do. It's a win because it's a story we'll never get. And we're, we're going to get an adaption of it. And it's a win because in a year's time, it's going to be all new people at, at Warner Brothers. If anything, if this thing is successful, if it does get a lot of views, if it does, you know, that's only going to speak more to the demand for more of that world, of that story. And it's going to might even create more interest in that this is just a tease. Zach's changed things. It's going to be different stuff. And it's going to be, you know, I, I I, I, I find it as a win-win. I don't see too much the, the disadvantages there. If there are, I, I think you really have to make a case for it because I don't think Warner Brothers is willing to put their, not even their foot, their leg farther down their throat by getting involved and in trying to sue them or, or get a strike. And that's the question. What if it fails? Um, again, I don't really see it failing either. It's a win-win for, for, for them as well in that, Everything's going to charity. That's the, that's the big lead in here. It's all going to charity. 
I'm not talking so about, even yeah, if it's, I'm not talking even about the monetarily monetary even, mon- I'm not even talking if about it's the monetary terrible, aspect. You know, I, 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 I'm probably it's probably gonna be good. I'll be yeah. honest, it's probably gonna be good. It's it, it probably will be. Um, I just think, I just think personally, and and I'll hold this. I'll hold this till the till the day I die. Well, not well, not I don't want to say that, but I'll hold this viewpoint is that I just don't think it's our place to do. I just so, don't. Those storyboards not- were Zach's. Those storyboards were Zach's. He put them in a museum. Um, they were that's that's that was his work. Him and Jim Lee. That's their work. Let me put it's it, not let me on you anyone. Like you can't. Fan fiction is one thing, right? Because you're creating your own story. This that's not what's happening here. They're taking something that was owned and written and created by Jim Lee and Zack Snyder. They're turning it into a motion comic. Whether or not that's a good idea, bad idea, doesn't mean anything. It's just I just don't think it's their place. Here's my question: Do you think Zack Snyder's upset about it? And if he's not, it doesn't matter what Zack's upset about it because he, he Zack doesn't work with Warner Brothers right now. Right? But your but your argument is that they're taking his. It's story. not their place. I'm saying it's not their place to do. That's that doesn't mean that Zach. If Zach came out and was like, "I'm all for this project, keep going, yada yada." Right? Zach's also the guy who told Warner Brothers to suck it the other day uh, or the other on on on, on, a, on Colbert. But yet we're all still clamoring for him to go back and work for Warner Brothers. Right? Chances of that are slim now. Yeah. Right. So I'm just saying, right or wrong, good or bad, what it's for doesn't matter. Like, it, 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 I hope a lot of money gets raised uh, for AFSP. Clearly, this is happening without my consent, with or without my consent, right? It doesn't matter what I say. It's still happening, right? Um, I just don't personally think that it's our place as fans or – film studios that I apparently like us as a film studio now. I, I didn't know that <clears throat> to, to take characters like this, take storyboards that aren't theirs and make that story come to life when we don't know what the future holds. It's been three months since the Snyder cut came out, right? We just don't I, know I, too much. Maybe if it was like four years from now and someone was like, you know what? It never happened. Let's just do it. I, I look. I see where you're coming from. I get your point. I really do. Uh, but that argument does not hold up. It doesn't. Because then does. you hit, no, it doesn't. Because then you'd have to argue that that's the case with every fan fi- If I were to go and a make fan an adaptation, film is being written go, by a if fan. I, if I were it's to go, not no, or plagiarized. Not necessarily. It's not plagiarized by some storyboards. Of are, some of them are adaptations. For example, if I were to go make. My fan film adaptation of Under the Red Hood. Would you be saying that I have no right to make it? Because if you, if you I don't know, the because we don't know what on. Yes, if you if you shot for shot, frame for frame, right? If you did that kind of thing, yes, I'd be like. Uh, that, but even then, Lightcast can't be doing that because they just have like storyboards and a couple pictures. Everything else did you is read up those to their inter- inter- up to, Yeah, they were super detailed. Super like, detailed, the, the, but there's still a lot of room for interpretation. There's I don't think they'll. I don't think I, they'll. I don't think they'll no, go. And on top of it, there's no di- They have none of Zach's dialogue. They're having to come up with the dialogue all on their own. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not going to dwell on this too long. Uh, yeah. I just, I, I'll, you will not change my mind. Yeah. I just don't think this is anyone's place to do. I don't. Yeah. And uh, again, I, I, I see your point. I, I just don't think that argument holds up. Well, then we will simply disagree on it. Yeah. Um. And then, and, and I hope it. I hope it turns out well. Uh. I hope it. I hope it makes a lot of money for for AFSP. I hope everyone's happy that's working on it. I hope everyone's excited. Um. And I hope. I hope that something comes of it. However, I. It's just. I'm just not on board. I yeah. personally, I'm just not on board with it. So. Um. I mean, do you have anything else that you'd like to that you that that was happening today? Um, there was, uh, something I, I retweeted. I've got to go back to my Twitter cause that's where I get my news. Cause I don't believe in CNN guys or the, or the mainstream news. My news is YouTube and Twitter. Um, let me see here. There was, it was, and it was something on, of course, cause I like to mention it all the time. Uh, free Britney. 
Um, something about her dad. Where is it? Oh, no, when I, here we go. Um, so her dad basically came out recently, I, like a couple of days ago, and basically said that the media and all of these things and all of this that they're 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 out to they're out to get him. They're making him oh, look geez. like a monster, and you know that this whole thing has been you know overblown right in in a, in a, in a sense um which was real funny and ironic coming from this guy right, right um right. in the meantime at it, like between him saying those comments her lawyers quit her conservation lawyers uh have quit and so the, lawyer, man, wait, and, wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> the lawyers for her or against her for her quit and her management dropped her because you know she said she doesn't want to make music anymore um so I don't know. It seems like on the inside, things are crumbling uh, from the father's perspective. Obviously, I don't think these lawyers necessarily probably want to be looked at as the lawyers who are making a woman be forced to do things against her own will and be a modern day slave, <laughs> basically. Um, and I would think that her management dropped oh, her. No. Yeah, Free Britney. Uh, I would think her management dropped her not in a bad way, but in a way of we're, we're behind you. If if you don't want to do this anymore, we're not going to force you to. If your father is, we'll just drop you. Right. You know, we're, I I actually kind of look at it as a Wait, good so thing. So they're dropping her to help her? It, yes. And I, it, I the way I look at it, I think it can be a good thing. Because okay. she, she doesn't – she's basically saying right now she doesn't want to make music anymore. Totally understandable. I would so think the, she's – So that's a good idea. That's yeah, a great idea. Because though. then – this guy's got no way of making and taking her money. Right. Because she's if she's not making, not making it. <sighs> and it sense. also puts him in the spotlight because now if she starts doing things, it's going to be publicly known that she did not, you know, she was like, no, I want to quit. She had her label drop her. She did all these things, you know. It would be it would be very obvious that, okay, the dad's being an asshole again. And, and you know, this guy is seriously, seriously demented. And just uh, like it's one of the most shocking public things I think that's happening right now, and it is mind-boggling to me how how again and this is why I don't watch the the mainstream news, and I have to fucking I freaking hear about it on Twitter and you know places that you know the news should be covering this. The news should be have this all over the place. This is modern day slavery. This, is, this guy is literally making his daughter do and work, you know, things that she doesn't want to do and then taking her profit. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's yeah. And and making decisions for Makes her, like sense. keeping a UID a, a, and all these other things. There is a, you know, I, I will never, ever, ever stop until this woman is is free. Yeah, that's, that's why I bring it up. <laughs> I'll never. Yeah. And you know what's funny is I was thinking about it today too. I really was. Really? Um, it's funny that you brought it up because I I was like, yo, you know what I haven't talked about in a while? Free Britney. Because free Britney. I want to keep talking. I want to I do keep too. voicing my opinion. Right. I do too. This, you know, this person, um, who revolutionized, uh, pop, pop music. Pop music. Right. Yep. And, and and from a woman's perspective, you know, for, for women especially, um, we need more people like this. Yes, yes, yes. We need to stand and we need to support um, Britney, Britney Spears because she, no one, no one should in 2021 be a, be slave. a slave. Oh, wow. Wow. And, and apparently this guy was never there as a father. You know, while yeah. she was growing up, her Believe mom it. was, and that's why I don't understand why Think about Lynn it. She Spears a isn't Disney doing more kid. to help. He just threw her in all the. It, it, it sounds very much kind of like Shia LaBeouf's father, just kind of throwing him in all these things and taking the profit. Right. Yeah, it's because, uh, and you know, it's it, it. Parents like to do this, and that, and that's why when we talked to Gary yesterday, I was like, I'm not. Yeah. I'm bored with actor. child actors. 
because they don't even know who they're. And then child performers is what I really should say. Um, I don't want, I, I'm not into that. And right. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it to my child. Um, I mean, I really wouldn't do it unless it was the case. Like Gary, Gary mentioned that like, that he, like he was begging basically yeah. to, to do, like this was, so unless my kid was literally like that, then I would, you know, maybe start looking at, but I'd be very protective and very oversightful of, you know, obviously who's working with, with my child and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. I think that's such a hard, you know, cause you do hear about these parents that like, Oh, my baby's cute. I'm going to go up, you know, put him in uh, audition him for a, you know, Gerber commercial or something like that. And of course the baby has no say cause he's six months old. You know, mm -hmm. he's just like, it's, it's, yeah, I don't agree with, I think that's a, it's a very selfish choice. It's not you're not looking out for your child at that point. I think you're looking out more more for yourself. Yeah, they're, 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 it's like they're trying to live vicariously through their children. Um, yeah, a lot of it happens a lot with sports. Uh, it happens yes. a lot. Yes, with yes, yes, big um, yes, yes. You yes. know, and and it seems like that's kind of like the case here. Uh, when the when the well went dry, when Brittany hung it up and was like, "I'm done," right? Yep. The dad was like, no, you're not. No, yeah. no, no, no. And like I said, I've said this before. I, when Brittany was going through whatever she was going through, uh, I don't doubt that maybe this started with good intentions, right? Like, hey, we, sorry, Brittany, as of right now, you're a danger to yourself and you're a dangerous society and your children, yeah. right? We, you just need to get help. But once she got help, Right, all those programs are for you to even prison, even prison. You know what prison is supposed to do? Prison is supposed to get you rehabilitate you, rehabilitated, yep. and, and ready to go back into the real world. Unless you serve in a life sentence, um, yes. It, yes. it's supposed yes. to uh, allow you to fix yourself or or work on yourself so that you can go back into the uh, you know society, society and be a con contributing member. Right. Correct. Same thing yes. with this. Uh, Britney Spears did the work. She went to the asylums. She went to these therapy things. She put, had an IED put into her against her will. Right. She can't have children unless her dad says so. Um, all that, as long as you do the work and, and you get to where you need to get, right, all that stuff should be lifted. The court, I'm, so, I'm shocked. Yeah. That the court. The, co seen this. the court, <laughs> the, the same court that's letting Bill Cosby out of jail. Right. Yeah, it's exact. Isn't allowing Britney Spears to keep her own money, make her own schedules. Or well, IUD, whatever the fuck it's, whatever it's called. It's not an I, explosive IUD, device. it's not explosive. <laughs> explosive to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> you know, the, the same court that's letting Bill Cosby out is, is making is, yeah. is, is allowing Britney Spears to continue to be a slave in her own. And and again, speaking about women fe being in fear or living in fear. Yeah, this Matt, is the Matt ultimate point. case of that. She, they said she was incompetent, but they continued to make her work. You know, that right there just yeah, tells you, you, you can't that's you how can't, much you care about a person. You hey, can't go to McDonald's really sick, without my blessing. But, Right, right, yeah. You get on that stage and shake her 12, you know, like, <laughs> 12 times a week. Yeah, exactly. shake that ass so that exactly. we get dollar the bills. All right, exactly. So, exactly. man, but by the way, you're really sick and you probably shouldn't be doing anything. Right, right now get on you, up there. Yeah, uh, you should be at therapy, but let's <laughs> let's get you on stage real quick. Let's get you on stage. Exactly, exactly. Um, I mean, it's just it makes no fun. It's it makes, so, and you know what? So, so horrible. Even if I get the monetization taken away, it makes no fucking sense yeah. why Britney Spears is still in the situation she's in. So, Zero. my homework to all of you viewers is to get out, get on social media, well, hashtag free donate, Britney. donate to our cause. Right, it means right. a lot to me. Uh, and then get out and hashtag free Britney uh, with a picture uh, of 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 use this picture. This is a good picture. Oh, yeah, that is a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. So use that one. Um, but I think that's all the time we have for you today. <laughs> Damn, it's already an hour and a half. We covered a lot. There's a lot. We did cover a lot. There's a lot. 
Listen, I, I, oh, as a quick. disclaimer. Uh-huh. Yeah, go ahead. As a disclaimer, I do want to say to anyone who's involved in the Justice League Dreamscape motion comic, I wish you the best. I think what you're doing is really cool. I think it's a great idea. Um I it's just not for me. I just don't think it's it's our place to do. But I wish you the most amount of success. And I wish that uh if if, if anything, you just have fun. That's an, that's that's the last thing I'll say on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um did want to say <laughs> Black Widow made sixty million dollars on premier access this weekend. Just on premier. on premier access? Just on premier access. <gasps> 80 million. They released domestic. those numbers? They re they released the number. They released the numbers in HP. So funny, funny that a streaming service released their numbers after two days. <laughs> it's such a shocker. Um $80 million domestic, $78 million international, $60 million on Disney+. Plus. Holy crap. That's a lot of money. That's a lot That's of stinking money, well. and Warner Warner is just crying right now. They're just it's crying. Doing, doing well. I'm, it's I'm doing lying. well. You know what? Blackwood is a good movie, guys. Oh! Oh, it's so much... Yeah, it, it, look. It's, and... It's so have... much better than Captain Marvel. Oh, my God. <laughs> That no, I'm serious. I said that in the movie. I said, and I, I think Madeline. I, did too. I, I think did Madeline too. even heard me say it. I was like, "This is how you do a female ensemble." The movie ended, and me and my my best friend Zach looked at each other and said, "This was so much better than Captain Marvel." <laughs> yeah, I mean, how that's holes, right? Oh, absolutely. Like any absolutely. film, but I think this movie was enjoyable. Its rewatchability is is up there. I think I'll rewatch it. Uh, now that's the one I don't. I don't think I'll rewatch it. Until maybe like October or, or something, but uh, you know, maybe. So that's maybe. yeah. So that that equals about twenty million homes bought Black Widow for thirty dollars, right? Wow. Twenty million homes instead of going out to the movie theater, <laughs> stay at home. home. But I think we need to start factoring in these same day premiere numbers. Um, like like all right. So it, it it's not in the same category as box office. Right, it's in a separate category, but then they're added together. And I will total say, revenue. I will say, I guess the difference here is Disney probably has an eager, easier algorithm to calculate because they're straight up, you're straight up paying thirty dollars for this specific film, whereas yeah. HBO they're just releasing stuff. There's no right. extra payment. There's no, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, that's, that's probably why that's HBO's HBO's so probably you, going. Oh God, you know, like would you say that the would you say the the total is so uh domestic 80 million it's supposed to be like 80 million yeah international is 78 right there 80 million that's 150 uh, 100, million. 100, 100 yep then 60 plus million for disney plus so we're at 210 ish million dollars Two in day, three days three days damn damn Marvel is back baby <laughs> If I think it's no surprise that Loki is debuting right now too, right? People are in that mood, that 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 man, that Marvel dude. mood, um, and it, it comes to no surprise. Speaking of which, that's what Tomorrow I was going to say night. earlier. Tomorrow, guys, join us. Um, this is the final episode, so we will be doing an hour, <laughs> a full hour on YouTube before the show, and we'll kind of recap the uh, the series so far. Right. Um, and then we'll be switching to Twitch and Periscope only for the actual viewing experience. Um, guys, it's going to be so much fun. Definitely tune in. We have so many more interviews. Uh, Tucky Williams coming on Wednesday will replace yes. the panel. Tucky is um, she's an actress uh, and a director who uh, she has a series on Amazon, which featured the first two um, female lesbian uh, lead actresses. Um, and she's been in a ton of other stuff. She was in the she was voted uh, top one hundred in the top one hundred um, most attractive females. I know. Yeah. So she'll be joining me and Austin on Wednesday night. Make sure to tune into that interview. We're gonna get into a bunch, a bunch of stuff. Uh, we're gonna be talking LGBTQ in Hollywood and representation, uh, and we're gonna be talking about her filmography, uh, what her stuff 
um, which she's got going on in, in, in the works. It's going to be a really fun conversation as we continue our live in July celebration event uh, in, in honor of my mother, Michelle Roberts, uh, the late Michelle Roberts. Um, so if you can donate, the links are in the description, guys. Uh, join the membership. Uh, if you can't donate it, like if you can't donate it, uh, donate to it, become a member. That money also goes towards uh, this month's overall goal. So you get something out of it as well. Um, yeah. guys. And guys, as always, too, look, we understand it's tough times. If you can't donate, the biggest, biggest contribution you can make is taking this link, taking our channel link, and just text it to a friend. Text it to a family member. Text it to somebody that you know who loves movies and might enjoy these things and, and might be able to, to give a couple bucks for a really, really, really incredible cause. That would mean the world to us. Um, you know, it's little things like that, too, that are just as meaningful. So, yeah. Uh, and and, it, and it's going to be going towards helping someone else with breast cancer directly. Exactly. Like, exactly. like I am, me and my, my sister and I, we're going to be creating a tribute foundation, um, much like the Autumn Snyder Tribute Fund. Um, right. We're going to be creating a foundation in my mother's name. Um, again, you know, we, we don't want to help a lot of people a little bit. We want to help one person a lot, uh, yeah. right? So yeah. uh, and, until this grows, um, you know, until it grows bigger and bigger and bigger, um, we, we decided that we would rather focus and help one person um, a lot and, and help them completely rather than giving everybody or giving a lot of people a little bit of a cut of it, you know? Exactly. Um, exactly. So, and then in five years, we'll reassess. Um, so guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, as always, you can find us on Twitter, on Facebook, on TikTok, on TikTok. Instagram. Yeah, on t- <laughs> all the links are in the description <laughs> below. You can find Austin uh, and Jack's Twitter as well in the description below. Uh, Austin is at AlienLV1023. Uh, I am at pop underscore culture 2020. Um, and then s- just search us on Facebook and you can find us guys. Yep. Um, we'll be back tomorrow with jiving with Jack starting at four 30. They've got a great show prepared for you guys uh, tomorrow. And maybe I'll stop in. Ooh, Ooh. who knows? Daddy That's might right. be there. Daddy might come in. Daddy, Daddy might stop by. <laughs> um, um, but yep. again, don't forget to like share, subscribe, um, do all that stuff. And I do have one more request. I know we've been just talking a year off here. Um, yeah. if you could head over to Inc, I mean, uh, head over to Apple podcasts, uh, yes. or Spotify, uh, and listen to the shows, um, yes. review the show on Apple, please, please, please. If you have an iPhone, if you have Apple podcasts, please review the show. We lost all of our reviews when we had to do the changeover. Um, so we've kind of starting from scratch here. Um, so follow the show on Apple, Spotify and Google, uh, and then review it on Apple and Google. Um, with we do it for you, and we do it for the culture. You guys are the best family. La mi familia, like oh, Fast and the Furious, baby. Family, family. And bro, we're all that. We are brought to you today by Smooth Mind Balls. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, are you sick of cutting yourself, nipping yourself with those? old razors that you've used 412 different times well smooth my balls has you covered your number one source for male grooming products dedicated to providing you the very best trimmers with an emphasis on service friendliness and overall good experiences smooth my balls has come a long way from its beginnings in england when they first started out their passion was for male grooming That drove them to start their own business and to find the best products suitable for easy grooming. You will thank me later, your privates will thank me later, and your partner will thank me later because you're gonna be smooth as an egg. Trust me. Use code POP at checkout for 15% off your entire order. Limit one order per household per day. Guys, girls, get on it shave up get it we are brought to you today by kai cbd a las vegas based 
health and wellness brand that crafts a full-spectrum CBD hemp-derived product line. Made with 100% love, the brand was created by a 20-year licensed massage therapist for her husband who suffers from chronic pain. Healing is what Kai lives for. Head over to their Facebook or Instagram uh, and mention Pop Culture Corner to receive 10% off your order uh, of all or any of their CBD-derived product line. Guys, their website is in the works. Head over to their Facebook or Instagram. The links are in the description below. Mention Pop Culture Corner and get 10% off. This ad is an easy one for me. Easy, easy, easy as I use the products myself. They are wonderful. So head over, mention Pop Culture Corner and get 10% off your order of all orders forever. Also, check out the Pop Culture Corner store. Get your merchandise and rep your favorite podcasts and YouTube channels. Merchandise. Get it now while it's hot and fresh. Um, and I will be sending out a code, a discount code to all of our recurring viewers. Guys, you guys are the best. Make sure to head over to the store. All the links are in the description below. And remember, free Britney. Oh,